Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back with another recording of Hearthstone. Today is April 20th, the self-appointed marijuana smoker's holiday and birthday of Adolf Hitler, uh, coincidentally. Although that's not going to have much to do with today's stream. Um, last stream was cut short rather pretty abruptly. Uh, I have determined I probably have... A and a slight infection in my right ear was what is commonly known as swimmer's ear uh, if it is a, it, indeed the outer ear and not inner middle ear infection or something completely different and so that was very painful to wear the headphones I did most of the stream with the headphones off and that certainly didn't even really fix it because it I mean just slightly running a fever and then pain the whole time so I'm still kind of suffering from that but I I've now found some medicine trying to alleviate the pain let's see we need to win two classes two games from any class and win three games with the major shaman and well on the Asian account we don't need the tavern or brawl so, all we need to do is make sure we have a mage and shaman deck that's playable. I think we're missing this one. And then let's just try to play a little bit of ranked. There, there is this issue of a lot of news because we went short last time. But I still kind of want to go short this time uh certainly i suffered for having such a short stream yet uh wednesday because uh that video that stream only got like three or four views which is not good not good at all i'm noticing since this is kind of the first time i've ever used this recommended uh, replacement feature that it really is just giving you the same options over and over again so either it knows the good cards or it's programmed to do something very strange uh, I guess I'm kind of bearing the lead here also uh, Ben Brode has seemingly out of the blue announced that he's leaving both Hearthstone as the person in charge of Hearthstone and Blizzard completely so I assume that means Activision Blizzard will get into his post on that in a second let's go ahead and try this battle cry shaman start playing uh, I don't know really what to say about that particularly uh, one of the interviews that Ben Bro did just probably a week ago uh, said he revealed that there are usually two expansions already are finished uh, that's what he said and so that Activision Blizzard is actually working on the third expansion that we don't know of uh, right now so any feedback whatsoever uh, i mean i imagine they could do little tweaks and stuff but any new ideas any major game changing shifts is just not going to be implement couldn't be implemented until nearly a year later which doesn't feel like it's it that's enough of a uh yeah that just does not feel like that's enough of a time to to shift around and and use next battle cry you play this next turn ooh interesting let's let's play this in two turns uh, that'll be interesting sure in the turn um, I guess since 
I really don't like the way Hearthstone has been going. I mean, I don't have this passionate, like, argument and hate for the way Hearthstone's been going. But I don't like how it, it very consistently has just kind of tried to make people play standard and have boring experiences and very consistently tried to have people have 50% win ratios and they really aren't addressing the lack of fun, the lack of winning. Uh, they just now are starting to address like the incredibly difficult daily quests and uh, the amount of grinding that an average player would have to play just to to have some kind of sort of experience there. Uh, so. So yeah. I don't know. I mean. The, you could go for some tinfoil hat ideas. And say maybe he didn't like the beast hunt idea. Uh, expansions. And the dungeon run stuff. That was incredibly popular. Uh, like. That would be the one thing is that if he somehow allowed somebody under him to make the dungeon runs thinking that was going to be a huge failure and and he, he said something along the lines of I'll, I'll quit if this turns out to be successful and then it turns out to be successful. Even if he only said that to himself, like that kind of makes sense. Uh, so let's see, I wanted to do this. Next battle cry, you play triggers twice. And then we do this. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, first story of the day. Blizzard accidentally revealed the Overwatch's Horizon, Zuni Horizon Lunar Colony map is getting a major rework. Uh, probably from some trailer. Hmm. Uh, I don't care about Overwatch, but enough to read that article so I'm just gonna move that on that's a PC gamer article uh, next article from PS PC gamer here they were talking about agony a few days ago and they're talking about agony again agony the horror game with about salacious demons in hell has a new release date salacious hmm I don't actually know the definition of the word that salacious and let's see you can't right click and define things, but you can. Uh, I just rebooted my computer because of Windows Update, and it seems like some of these things are just not as zoomed in as they used to be, even though they still are zoomed in. I, I believe that was part of one of the new Windows updates, was that they were going to start putting uh, different resolutions on different programs even even though you have a di difference let's see salacious adjective of writing pictures or talk treating sexual matters in an indecent way typically conveying undue interest or in or enjoyment of the subject hmm Synonyms are pornographic, obscene, and decent crude loot. Okay. So it's a five dollar word for for a much better way to say that. And I, I suppose agony is by that definition probably salacious. I'm trying to win right now, I have to remind myself that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh it's New teaser says it's coming out in May. It's a minute and four minutes, and four, minute and four seconds long teaser. It shows this new character that I haven't seen in Agony before. It's it's kind of like a a woman with almost a porcelain ivy ivory doll face that's cracked around the edges and showing bits of red viscera I would imagine flesh brain hmm. the thing here that's still the problem with agony is that every trailer seems to take it further and further away from what I 
I've seen it to be, which is it's supposedly something like Bioshock, which now it's in this weird position where they've kind of get have to get Agony out before the next Bioshock comes out because there will be poor comparisons to, to Bioshock. Otherwise, there will be poor comparisons. It says May 29th, so maybe we can get off the hype train of Agony on May 29th. Uh, most of the trailers don't show that, though. Uh, Eurogamer has a article set called The Hugely Charming Yoko's Y-O-K-U I guess that's Yoku's Island Express has a release date. Uh, let's see. It's coming out for the Nintendo Switch PC, PS4, Xbox One on the 29th of May. Uh, I have not heard anything about this game. Which, I suppose that is what I'm advocating for, is the, the concept that games should just come out of, or I should, at, at the very least, hear about games for the first time within a couple months of it coming out. Like, I, I could go for a year. Like, I get it. Triple A games getting announced at E3 and then a year later coming out, that, that seems fine. It's just when you start going over a year to two years, when there's been two E3s. Uh, and of course you don't have to announce your game at E3, you might announce it at some other junction. And But I think you've got about a year. And certainly that amount of time is going down as more and more games are coming out and more and more games that are worth playing are coming out, which it's hard to really prove that that is the truth. Uh, it actually may very well be the opposite of the case. There may be less games coming out. Uh, Call of Duty uh, being a great example of that, since Call of Duty has, has just said that they're, they're not even going to bother to have a single player campaign. Like, I'm watching this trailer for this game, and it's more of an interview with the people. Apparently, it's being made by Team 17, the creators of Worms. It's a digital only launch, and it's going to cost 15.99 pounds. Uh, in the UK or 1999 somewhere else <laughs> like they didn't even finish the sentence your game <laughs> okay and that certainly wasn't a victory let's try tempo mage so I need to hear a little bit more information about Yoku's Island it, it looks like it's you're playing as maybe a dung beetle in some kind of conquer-esque game maybe a 2d side scroller it was really hard to tell like not a lot about that uh interesting article on game of sutra the latvian game dev conference it's just called latvian game dev conference uh, let's see it's probably just talking about what happened there and let's there there's a couple of Latvian companies I believe it's uh, or at least a couple that went um, let's see someone from image and form games someone from gray alien games there's a slide here for SteamWorld games, so they're talking about that. Hmm. In a weird way, this might be the game dev conference to go to if you, if you don't want to be inundated with all the California people who are going to su succumb to a very specific group think. Although, uh, although to be truth. Truthful, going into any kind of convention is is 
buying into some kind of group thing. I mean, that's what a group gathering is all about. Either you go there to agree with people, or you go there to disagree with people, and either way, you're part of the culture or part of the counterculture. Hmm. I just thought it was interesting that Latvia would even have a games conference. I tried to click that button there, and it didn't let me do it. Let's see. Because of the way things are, and because Chrome updated, I I don't know what's going on here. I think it's decided instead of squishing down the tabs anymore on Chrome, it's just go falling off the edge. So that there are more tabs to the right of my furthest right tab but at the top of the bar than, than it's showing. Because the furthest right the tab I see still has the Steam logo. Uh, we've got our first game that came out on Steam came out April 20th from a developer called Brutal Studio, which has two games. This is no discount for two two ninety nine. It's called Rogue Buddies Aztec Gold. Hmm. It looks like a kind of two D Contra style running and gunning it might be a rogue game let's see i guess i need to do this hmm. and then end the turn let's see what are the tags here it says the action adventure Rogue Buddies is an action 2D shooting platform adventure quest requiring you to swap between four mercenaries. Like, I'm pretty sure there's already been a game on Steam that is like this from Digital Devolver. So I don't understand if you could really justify paying the $2.99 to play something like this. Uh, but this is a real game. Uh, although it seems like it might be early access and just not being labeled as early access. Like, nothing really looks here like a bad effort. Let's see, what do we want to do? Just freeze the guy? Hmm. See that that's probably too early and something about hearthstone right now is taking a significant delay to recognize that i can't do anything more i guess i'll leave rogue buddies alone and and put it on my wish list and see how how it goes uh gamma sutra has an article the infamous fmv game night trap is headed to the nintendo switch after all that's not really surprising though considering they're trying to get as much money, it seems, out of that as possible. Uh, when the remaster, the Night Trap, came out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and people covered it, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people who who tried to play it and tried to get some some kind of coverage on it on YouTube and just uh, I know Giant Bomb covered it and. It's, it's one of those games that is one of the rare number of games, actually, that's historically important, but really isn't worth playing. Uh, I would love the remaster of Night Trap in my collection. I would probably play it because I've never played the game before, uh, and I have played full motion video games similar to that. Mine, the one I played when I was a kid was called Double Switch, which... Uh, was a lesser known version of these type of games uh i'd want to play it once certainly but i also know that the remaster wasn't much of a remaster and there's really not too much you can do with it the 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 one thing you would want to do with night trap is just reboot the whole series and make it animated and not full motion video and that would irritate people so it's 
it's really a license that you probably can can't do anything with. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I have no idea. Because you can't do live action. And if you did do live action, people would say it's too corny even though the original is corny. People would complain if it's not corny enough. Uh, people wouldn't like the actors or if you hire uh, whoever you hire. Like, it's just a minefield of, of dissatisfaction that's going to happen. Uh, so, PC Gamer has an article, Hearthstone won't be the same without Ben Brode. The game director led Blizzard's card collectible, collectible card game through the golden era. Now it's up to those who follow to keep it up. Uh, I don't I don't think it's fair to say the the beginning of Hearthstone is the golden era. Just it's the only era right now. Like uh Hmm. Let's see. Like I'm scrolling down PC Gamers article but I don't see a reason to read P PC Gamers article since they just link to Ben Brode's outgoing article and I think that is definitely the better thing to cover hmm well, I guess I have to do this and this and then play this and then do this and then the turn alright so zoom up this page so Ben bro four hours ago said to my friends co-workers in the Hearthstone community after 15 years at Blizzard and almost 10 years working on Hearthstone. So it's been a long time. This is not an, an example of, oh, I've worked at a company for one year. Now I'm taking my golden parachute and that's going to be the end of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even know. Like, I want to play ranked. I want to get up higher than ranked 23. I want to get at least a card back. But at this rate, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. Uh, I have made the incredibly difficult decision to embark on a new journey. It seems really abrupt to do that this and do it, uh, although kind of planned to do it on a Friday. Man, that was a hard sense to time. I was 20 years old when I started here. My role was night crew game tester. Since then, Blizzard has been good for to me. I got to cast esports events, announce BlizzCons, play in rock bands, write raps, work with incredible people. But the biggest opportunity came in 26 when I joined Team 5, the Hearthstone team. Um, I suppose that argument certainly could be made that Ben Brode is, is a little bit weird and kooky and crazy to be a guy in charge of a team. Uh, but in the video game industry, that's that's not super crazy. It, it wouldn't be crazy if he started his own own company and they just trickled out with a few games that were a lot smaller scale and and just lived kind of like how Gabe Newell did Valve and uh, the guy who runs Double Fine. I forget his name all the time. Tim Schafer did Double Fine. Um, let's see his next paragraph is I'm very proud of Hearthstone I think it made an impact on the industry people tell me that Hearthstone brought their families close together or, and that they became close friends with people they met at a fireside gathering others tell me they were inspired by Hearthstone to become game developers themselves it's incredible to be part of something that touches so many people you probably get that response from any popular game ever even slightly unpopular games uh, you'll find somebody that loves them that they'll find you and say something nice to you um i suppose it might also be that he's getting out before hearthstone gets shut down for 
for loot box gambling. <laughs> that would that would be really crazy. Uh, but it's not a, totally impossible that that they get some crazy restriction put on them where people really don't even want to play Hearthstone games anymore because you can't buy card packs and because you can't buy card packs there's like no way to make it work as a concept hmm, hmm. Uh, he says, but as proud as I am of Hearthstone, I'm even more proud of my team. There's no team like the Hearthstone team. People have come and gone over the 10 years Hearthstone has been in development. But there's something special about the soul of the team. Wow. That's kind of like a backhanded compliment. Like, there's something special about the general grouping of the team. Uh, which arguably would be what Ben Brode was creating with the team dynamic. Not anything special about any individual employee hmm. uh, we knew our most important product was the game but the team itself uh, I disagree completely a great team can do great things and I think Hearthstone's team is the greatest it isn't just a job it's a shared passion we get to come and work and focus on the game we love and try to make it better every day so the entire paragraph is just team, team, team. Uh, next paragraph is we frequently check the Hearthstone subreddit looking for opportunities to improve the game. In other words, they frequently look at the subreddit looking to steal people's ideas and suggestions because they don't have any ideas or suggestions themselves. And that, again, could be a reason with the leaving is that he just came to the realization that he can't get away with pretending anymore I should have killed that one what was I thinking uh, I have loved the silly memes engaging in spirited debates or just being held accountable to our shared hide standards for the game we try to be highly available on social media and I think that our team helped push the envelope in this regard it's been especially satisfying to see the team step up over the last few years and help engage in these ways as I became more focused in on direction and less on actual design. I get too much... Let's see. Uh, next paragraph is I get too much credit by virtue of being the public face, but the 80 plus team on the development team are still there. Team, team, team. Team, team, team. Like, like, you say it enough, it starts to feel negative. As if he hates his team, and that's why he's leaving. Although, it'd be kind of weird that, that the boss would hate his team so much that he's leaving, when you could just as easily slowly fire the worst of the worst and get rid of everybody. Uh, over the course of ten years, you could, you could easily... It would place 80 plus people. I mean, you could get half the people gone pretty quickly. Uh, that is, I suppose, another reason. I, I mean, you can tinfoil hat any reason why he'd abruptly leave. Maybe Activision uh, Blizzard s simply told him you have to fire half your team, and he says, said no, and so they fired him. Um, I mean, that could be it and that would certainly make sense why he would be talking about the team and talking up the team so much uh, is because that's that would make sense and uh, let's see the continue and they are still the ones that are actually making the cards brawls events missions features uh, tavern brawls in particular have been very lazily handled and events barely ever happen missions have only been the dungeon runs in my opinion and the arena's got problems <laughs> like every single feature in the game you can put some major criticism on all of them including ranked play where i'm at rank 23 and can't can't catch a break playing what hs replay at least 
in its broken form told me was a decent deck to start with. Uh, continuing, I'm confident the game is in the best possible hands and I'm excited to see what a new generation of Linders leaders take Hearthstone from here. I'm very fortunate, new paragraph, I'm very fortunate to be able to take a crazy, risky, right? Oh, take a cre crazy risk right now in my life. And I'm excited to be scrappy and a little scared. Uh, let's see, can we... Should we? <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. I'm probably getting itchy throats and cough from being sick too. Uh, I'm excited to be scrappy and a little scared. I'm going to help start a new company. That's what I figured. We'll probably make games, but we haven't figured out anything else out yet. Okay, so you don't make... You're, you're either an idiot who shouldn't be running a company to, to say something like this. I'm going to start a new company. We'll probably make games, but we haven't figured anything else out yet. Uh, he got fired. Like, reading between the lines, take the tinfoil hat halfway off. This is straight up Activision Blizzard fired him. Uh, and in the video game industry, it's just such a bad setup that that you just don't claim you don't admit to being fired. Hmm. And in this time of the hashtag Me Too, I mean, like. I wouldn't be surprised if, if if I put my tinfoil hat back all the way on. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some allegations that come out against Ben Brode, whether true or not. Uh, but he, I'm pretty sure, got fired. Because you would have plans. You would have been talking about starting a company for a year. You would have, you would have had ideas, pitches conversations um hmm. like the next sentence is i'm looking forward to designing programming and agic actually creating things again which won't work because this is the same as tim schaefer and double fine is uh ben brode if he truly has been out of the business for for let's say five of the ten years he was with hearthstone and he wasn't actually programming like and he was pro hearthstone's a unity programming anyway so you're already in a weird position uh there uh, he, he's, he's just not going to be up to date on programming standards he, he'll he'd be worse than a, a a fresh face out of college uh the next sentence in this paragraph is, I'm going to miss the on-campus Starbucks, though. Dang. Uh, just could have left that part out. Uh, Blizzard, thank you for taking a chance on me, and thank you for taking a chance on Hearthstone. And I still think he's got fired, even though he's thanking Blizzard. Because, I mean, that's just what is expected of you, is companies abuse you, and then they fire you, and then... You, you you thank him for it. Hmm. And to the passionate co community of players, I will miss you. And the last we shared together, thank you for making, uh, for being a part of Hearthstone so much fun for me. I loved every minute. Sincerely, Ben Brode. I think one of the other issues you could com Ben Brode has a legitimate complaint about is the heavy, heavy push of Hearthstone in China was causing him to go to China to events, which that's a hard flight. Uh, and the Chinese on those events, for the one two I've seen, seemed very uninterested in the game. Uh, the like very sparsely sparse rooms full of reporters, uh, whereas any kind of event like that in any other country would probably be packed to the to the gills with with people. 
but like I'm I'm not complaining for him for that hard flight. Like that's something where I would have I would have as Ben Broad said, if you're gonna do something like this, you need to hire a China representative, uh, a Asian representative that flies around and covers those things and speaks the language. I mean, uh, and knows the cultures, uh, something like that. Ben Bro didn't ever really need to be a celebrity. Uh, there's so many project leads at so many games that aren't made into celebrities, and I think that is a little bit of a problem in video game in general is that we end up with these celebrities that we build up like Gabe Newell, Tim Schafer, Ben Brode, uh, Peter Molyneux, and then we tear them down when they disappoint us. And in all honesty, most of those people were just bosses and should just be hidden behind the scenes management. Let's see. Hmm. That's an interesting thing, too. Uh, one of the things that always struck me as a little funny is is how easy it was for for some of the jobs I worked for them to never even bother to tell me who the boss of their of my boss was. Like they they don't bother to explain the corporate structure at all uh, a lot to people. It's like I'm your boss. That's it. And so it would, it's very feasible that if your boss got fired, uh, they would, some new random person could walk in and say, I'm the new boss. And you'd be like, okay, I guess. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, what I take away from that is... He was fired. It seems like if I'm going full tinfoil hat, uh, half tinfoil hat says he was fired. Full tinfoil hat says that he was fired because he refused to lay off a significant number of people uh, at Hearthstone um, after this expansion, which would be right around the time that you would want to lay off people. Uh, but let's just keep moving. We've got this game called Ceres and Aura. That's C E R E S S and Aura O R E A. It says it's an indie adventure anime romance. Looks like it's an RPG maker game to me. Or at the least, it's very much in that style. A kind of a dungeon crawler, 8 bit pixel art graphics. Same thing I've seen hundreds and hundreds of times. Let's see, it came out April 20th. It's from a developer. Let's see if they have anything else. Let's play this. And then play this. Alright. How are we going to do this? Then... We'll kill this one, and we'll kill this one, and we'll attack this, and this, and play another one of these, I guess. And then the turn. So it's one dollar ninety nine cents, no discount, and this developer is like this is the first game they've made. Hmm. We've got a trailer. They're kind of falling for the the general mistake of a lot of screenshots being extremely black and dark. It, it just does not work. I I think Valve could just reject screenshots alone based on that it's just like this screenshot has too much blackness in it when they're going to allow it uh the, there's nothing here so crazy that looks like uh it would catch my attention and 
the 8-bit graphics aren't, don't look that good and it has some points where in the trailer it zooms up to a closer graphics which looks all right but not great so i don't think there's anything special enough there to to bring me close to playing something that's probably an rpg maker game even though it doesn't say it is but i suppose we've hit an interesting point where the I should have played one of these. What am I doing? <laughs> Let's see. We got to kill somebody. So we'll do that. And then we'll kill that. And we'll take that. And then we'll attack here. And attack here. And then this. Hmm. And we'll play this. Hmm. Like, I have so many cards that I can summon. Interesting. Next game we have came out on the 19th. It's called Samba Shooter. It looks like an asset flip game. 10% uh, off for $3.59. No reviews. Uh, yeah, it just looks like an asset asset flip game where you're playing with something that looks like a Roomba shooting other little blocky things yeah let's see if this developer has any other garbage uh, yeah they have one other game that looks horrible if not an asset flip game called As Endless Wave so let's move move on what in the world are they doing to bring back all these people? This. Where'd that guy go? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. We start with this. And then can we play? We gotta get rid of something. So let's damage this. And I think I gotta get rid of something else. So I'm gonna damage this. Then we play this. And then we do this. And then we do this. Hmm. Hmm. And we're going to do this. And then we're going to end the turn. Uh, Gematsu has this full-length trailer and screenshots for a live-action horror adventure game that launches July 19th in Japan called Closed Nightmare. So I want to watch this. First, I think I've heard of this game. Hmm. Hmm. There's ever so slightly too many Japanese or Asian horror games that are made that still don't come out worldwide uh, there was definitely a, a number of them that came, that failed to come out worldwide in previous decades and it would be one of the top well the probably the second most likely type of game to be imported with with anime sex games being the the first likely to be imported so a guy wakes up he's trying to uh call an elevator the elevator's not coming some kind of monster appears and let's do this that didn't work all right well then we'll just do this
And then we'll just do that. Hmm. So this seems like it's a live action game, but not in a way that really would matter. Uh, it, it seems seems like it's it's gonna have a lot of cutscenes in between very limited amounts of of puzzles and maybe one arm becomes possessed in the game and then it kind of feels like it's a found footage ghost hunters esque combination like it seems like some people are in the area knowing that they're investigating something and some people are just victims in general hmm. this is a little bit more ambitious however than what you would normally get because being a Japanese game it's not very common that the Japanese spend their efforts to make full motion video as their first choice. They usually try to make uh, try to make something in manga, then animated, maybe light novel. Like if somebody told me Closed Nightmare was a light novel that they some for some reason decided to skip straight to a live action version of it, uh, that's that'd be more understandable certainly uh, let's see does this have anything it says key features via Amazon Japan presented like a live-action horror movie and of course Japan does have live-action horror movies so I guess if it was somebody coming from that perspective it would make sense and then making a game about it Exploration parts investigate items and clues, and challenge parts unveil various mysteries. Hmm. So I hope Closing the Nightmares does come out world worldwide, but I guess it would kind of have to succeed uh, in general in the West, uh, in the East first, and maybe it will, maybe it won't. I guess that'll be the thing. Uh, Gamato has another article, Disgaea Refined for screenshots. Seems like Disgaea Refined, which is the remaster, HD remaster of Disgaea or Out of Darkness for PlayStation 4 and Switch, uh, which I believe is the remake of the first game. Seems like the first game had a more flat 2D JRPG animation style, anime animation style to it. Whereas what I've seen from the second and third game seems like the the game went to more of a slightly 3D style. But maybe it really hasn't changed that much at all. <laughs> wow, this guy, like, this is ridiculous. Three times he's been able to play this. Is he manipulating some kind of system like I, I don't even know what he's doing first we'll play this and then I suppose we have to I want to kill something so let's kill this and then I want to play this so I draw more cards, I guess. And I guess do this. And then I guess in the turn. Uh, we've got a game that came out April 19th called Retro Rocket Robot. It looks like total garbage. Uh, worse than an Atari level game. Well, maybe maybe slightly better than Atari. Two dollars and ninety nine cents. No no discount. Nobody's bought it. No reviews. Uh so let's move on from that. 
Hmm. PC Gamer has a article, Build the Most Confusing Furniture Store Possible in Assembly Required. Uh, is this a store management type game where you try to keep people walking? Yeah, Assembly Required is a management sim that's all about engineering the dreaded feeling of emergency from a emerging from a furniture store wondering what days uh, so so the idea is to make a furniture labyrinth in a furniture store so people get confused and can't escape okay that's that's a kind of funny idea Let's see. Hmm. It says it's coming to PC summer 2018. Do they have any better date? No. So these this is one of those articles I rail about where I I kind of like this idea of assembly required. It looks like the animation style is a artistic choice, even though it is kind of a, a weird artistic choice. Uh, but without a release date, there's really no reason to be talking about an assembly required right now. That was an incredibly long game that didn't get me any victories. Uh, so it's been like three or four games and like we're at zero win percent ratio let's move on the casual cannot play standard and win it ranked on the asian account apparently uh pc gamer has an article this is an interesting sounding one the everspace developer reportedly says they paid thousands for a pro streamer who played like an effing moron Rockfish Games co-founder Michael Shade throwing some shade. That should have been the title. Is Michael Shade throwing shade speaks about speaks out at Reboot Develop. Uh, hmm. uh, he criticized the way agencies assign influencers to promote to clients' games. Well, first of all, uh, you're asking for trouble. If you personally are going to authorize an agency to hire just any influencer any streamer you're asking for trouble you need to do your research you need to know are they in line are their actions in line with your brand uh are they going to be really dumb and crazy because a lot of there's a lot of logan paul wannabes out there and and jake paul wannabes too uh who would qualify as influencers and might be who you want for certain games but you've got to know that i would not just hand off my advertising so readily to an agency it also talks to a level of just lack of communication with the agency you hired uh, like when marketing is 3d sci-fi shooter everspace shade his team reportedly paid up to 5,000 pounds an hour for one professional stream who was bad at playing the game. Well, I think that's potentially a risk you're going to take, particularly with a new game. And you would have also wanted to train and give some tricks, tricks to the guy. Give him a little bit of help. Uh, if I was willing to sell out in that fashion, which is, this would be selling out certainly and sponsor and be an influencer and play somebody's game. At that point, I've so completely sold out that I'd be like, where, where's the tips and tricks? What, are, what is the secrets? What am I supposed to do? Uh, if I get in trouble here, what, what do I do? Uh, I'd probably want somebody extremely familiar with the game sitting right next to me able to give me every trick 
Why do I? Oh, I'm. I missed that. I missed another thing. Hmm. Like I, I was thinking I was gonna use the fire blast and still didn't do it. Let's see. Only uh. He he goes on to say, "quote Only three or five of the twenty YouTubers and influencers who were paid to play Everspace ever worked, and that's a pretty high number. The rest were okay or a disaster. Streamers are way more expensive. The most expensive stream was paid five thousand euros per hour, and we had to book him for two hours. Actually, his opening line was, "I have to place. I have to stop playing Destiny two now because I'm." On a sponsored stream to play a space game, and I don't like space games. And then he played like a complete moron. <laughs> dot dot dot, an effing moron. Uh, well, see, like, this guy is complaining because he didn't do his own due diligence, really. Like, if somebody tried to hire me to play Call of Duty, for instance, how many times have I said, First person shooters are not my thing. How many first person multiplayer shooters have, are on my channel? I can tell you the answer is zero. Uh, the closest thing I've ever played is Borderlands 1, and that's not really a multiplayer first person shooter, competitive first person shooter game. So if somebody wanted to hire me like that, th that's them not doing their due diligence at all and not caring. They didn't care about where they were going to spend their money at the beginning to do their research, and now they're complaining that their money didn't pay off. It's like if you walked into a used car dealership, didn't care what car you got whatsoever, didn't care the condition, didn't care the mileage on it, didn't care what color it was, and then you bought, they sold you the worst car on the lot, and then you bought it, it broke down, then you complained that the car dealership didn't do the due diligence for you in a world where everybody knows the car dealership is only gonna just sell you something. Um, that's all they ever were going to do. Let's see. Hmm. PC Gamer has this weird article called I love Saya no Uta that's S A Y A space N O U T A uh what does Uta stand for even though it's incredibly messed up uh no is is the word the in Japanese and Saya is obviously a name so it's Saya the something uh the subtitle to this is these in not safe for work visual novel released in Japan in 2003 is still giving players troubled dreams today. It's very strange for PC gamer to, to bother to care, uh, to care or cover Japanese games at all. So why is this one special? It says. First paragraph it says, after surviving a horrific car crash that kills her parents, Furamonori begins to perceive every other human being in the world as what can only be described as wriggling lumps of flesh. He can barely understand the world spewing out of their rancid meaty appendages, but when he tries to explain what he's seeing, he's restrained and drugged. He has no choice but to pretend everything is fine. Okay. Even buildings and mundane objects take on twisted, hellish cast. Language is garbled. Sweet smells are rancid. And what was once ordinary is now sinister. Okay, yeah. So that seems like a standard Hellraiser-ish type uh, story. It opens up the door in an animated sense to show a lot of grotesque and gory things. Hmm. I ran into a uh, YouTube channel, and I guess I'm giving a shout out to a YouTube channel, sort of, but I'm also calling them out for for being a blatant ripoff of Red Letter Media. It's been running for like a year, 
and it's been putting a lot well it has a year's worth of video it's it has like as many as four people as hosts and they they are kind of direct ripoffs of red Litter media except for the problem is they're they're actually reviewing bad movies whereas red Litter media's best of the worst kind of paraphrases and skips quickly through bad movies to the point where most of their videos on their youtube channel is uh is uninteresting to even watch because nobody's going to actually seek out that and mostly the problem is uh they are just not the characters that the characters on red lady media are they're just not that good of an actors and they're they're doing an obvious ripoff uh of it and who wants to watch an obvious ripoff of an original that you can watch on youtube and just fine and be fine but the the weird thing is that they're, they're really trying really hard putting a lot of production value into it and they barely have 600 subscribers which is still three times as many subscribers as i have certainly but uh, in fact i lost a subscriber this uh, this week or so so somebody unsubscribed for some reason uh, i've forgotten to ask people to subscribe and click the bell too uh, please do that yeah so i i don't know what i was really trying to say there is i found them because they followed me on on you on twitter and i was like eh, you know I, i'll try out i'll try out another movie review website with with the whole channel awesome stuff going on and and uh i would like to to have a few more movie review sites and get some different opinions uh that is another issue with bad movie movie night uh, i believe is what it's called is that their opinions don't seem to be informed enough like uh, there is a on their hell late the review of the latest hellraiser movie uh people one of the guys was mispronouncing words and and i'm not sure if he was doing that just because that's what one of the characters actually does in red letter media or if he just didn't know how to say the words and didn't a get corrected by his friends or b care to reshoot it uh, once you start to put quality into it the the mistakes are going to look bigger anyways i was talking about this game saya no uta let's scroll down um let's see Well, there must be uh, there must be one character here that doesn't look like a ball of flesh because and I guess that's where the the romance visual novel element is coming in on that but I suppose that also implies we shut up uh, Uh, yeah. They're saying this game has a Lovecraftian hell evocative. I, I don't know if Lovecraft ever even touched on the, on hell, like a heaven and hell element. Uh, and the I have no mouth and I must scream concept. Hmm. Let's see, here's a trailer. For No, this is just a soundtrack. Hmm. Song. Hmm. So, I, I guess since somebody's talking about this game on PC Gamer, you would guess there was a link to a Steam place or a itch.io, some uh, heck, even Play Asia link where you download it and import it you'd think there'd be something like that 
to point you towards this game if you should if you want to play it hmm. uh, knowing that there's it's it's also got some sex elements in it but there's literally the only link I have is in the visual novel database which is not something I even knew existed until this moment and like is this just straight up pointing me towards like where to download it illegally hmm. Hmm. Like there's patches, uh, like English patches that are on this website and other language patches. Like and what, what are you supposed to take from this who wrote this article why would you write this article and they just point point you to an inability to purchase it legally is, is pc gamer now just fully endorsing piracy as it's the only option um, it's pointing me to a website that patches in the english like, let's look at this. Uh, first comment, or most recent comment, your inline video ads are really annoying, especially when X is hidden under until the end. Hmm. 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 Uh, so 13 hours somebody says I always love seeing serious articles about visual novels on PC gamer I haven't seen any so they must do it like in a blue moon uh, We have Alex Diaz in on the chat saying hi. Hi, Alex. Hmm. Yeah, I cannot wrap my head around why this writer wrote this article when it, it has like no actionable articles whatsoever. It was written by Brittany Vincent. The The thing she wrote before that was 14 days ago, remembering Ski Free and the Yeti that still haunts our dreams. I was also very confused why that was being an article. And then before that, the, on February 14th, Brittany wrote the best engines for making your own visual number, uh, novel. Uh, then they wrote, uh, Brianna let's lays butterfly soup as a trump for queer storytelling. So is that what this is a at the very least compared to Abby, uh, who went on to play the Sims, which a lot of people kind of hate the Sims as a, as a video game. Cause it's not, not your standard experience in a video game and can certainly be explained the way as, not being the best experience ever. Um, at least Brittany here seems like she is following up her what seems like one article ab about Butterfly Soup uh, with covering some other visual novels. As I scroll back further in her history, uh, she has like 20 weirdest adventure games, most relaxing PC games. A b brief history of online gaming on the PC. A quick trip to the cyberpunk murder city of Ruiner. It seems like this must be a new writer, freelance writer, that 
is uh like it must be cuz the they they must PC gamer must just be filling in a certain number of articles per day with freelancers because there's no consistency in in writing an article like that at all. I'm wasting far too much time on it. Uh, Steam has a publisher sale this weekend for Didelic. D-A-E-D-A-L-I-C. If Didelic is a German point-and-click adventure game, makers of a few, few worth mentioning. Uh, so apparently somebody's broadcasting. What? What is this pop-up? Didn't Chrome say it was going to stop auto-playing videos? Um, so, Didelic Publisher Sale. Wait a minute. Yeah. So, they made the Deponia series, which is 85% off for $5.99. I think at $5.99 you are getting a good deal for a very long-running point-click adventure series that can be a little bit of a pain state of mind is 10 percent off you can get the armageddon bundle uh didelic is known for having a lot of bundles a lot of the bundles overlap the same things over and over again uh like the entire publisher's weekend bundle 72 percent off uh deponia is weird in that there have been multiple multiple bundles of that candle sky hill anna's quest uh, i I played that. I, I'd say it's sort of worth playing once, but it's kind of all of the Didelic games ha tend to have disappointing, uh, sad endings, and they tell stories that don't, to me, feel like they should have disappointing, sad endings. Look at this. I'm finally going to get a victory. I don't believe I started a timer. So I kind of want every single game made by Didelic, the Ed and Har Harry, Edna and Harvey series. Uh, in particular, is a big one I wanted to get. Uh, Night of the Rabbit. Uh, a lot of their games also go a little bit different in different directions. And since this is going up to 90% off, that is probably the best deal you're ever going to get for uh, Didalic Games. One victory. <laughs> One victory so far. I, I need to look at the timer and see how long we've been running because I didn't start the timer. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes and I think that is just the right time to wrap up this recording and break it up. Stay tuned if you're watching live. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. When you subscribe, please click the notification bell. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me even further, friend me on Steam and give, gift me a game or a gift card. Uh, like I said, the Didelic sale is on right now. That's one that I probably have quite a few games on my wish list uh, that would match that. And frankly, I'd take pretty much any anything they've got to offer. That's it for this recording. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.